You're watching Game Show Network. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Moore. Welcome to To Tell the Truth. It's very nice to have you with us again. To my left are two-thirds of a great walking team. The young gentleman's name is David Kunst, and David, what is the name of your beast here? Willie Mankin. Willie Mankin. There's a good reason for that name, as you'll find out later. I say that, he is, that, that they're two-thirds of a team. You'll find out about that later, too. How far have you two and your other partner walked so far, David? A little over 1,400 miles. You have been on foot a little over 1,400 miles, That's huh? right. We'll find out more about that, more about Willie, more about your partner in just a minute as soon as we meet the panel here on To Tell the Truth. Thank you, David. Thank you, Willie. Gene Rayburn. <laughs> Jimmy Carlisle. Bill Fox. And Peggy Cash. Yeah. Us fellas are kind of drab, but us ladies, I'll tell you, are yeah, rainbow. Beautiful. Gorgeous. And I want to tell you, if you get a chance not to get near to that mule, yeah. you grab it. Uh, <laughs> I've played with a lot of mules in my time. That one's not real happy about being in the show business at all. <laughs> at all. He tried to bite me, and so I moved. He tried to kick me. That's nice. But now, let us meet our ambitious walker. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is John Kunt. Number two. My name is John Kunt. Number three. My name is John Kunt. All right, and here is the John Kunt. Story, it goes like this. It says, I, John Kuntz, have an extraordinary objective, namely to walk all the way around the world. Now, other people have had their dreams, sure, but there's no denying that this is the most unusual plan afoot. Actually, my brother David and I are walking together in the company of a pessimistically named mule called Willie Make It. We've already tramped over 1,300 miles, and estimate it'll take around three years to complete our globe-girdling grind. I want you to know that we're putting our peregrinations to good use. You see, along the way, we accept contri uh, contributions to that wonderful organization, UNICEF, the United Nations Children's Fund, signed John Kunz. dig in and try to separate the real from the fake, let's stop and make a little rent money. It's the best of Art Link Letters kids say the darndest thing. Why don't you want to get married? Because I don't, I don't want to sleep with any lady. <laughs> this special video is not available in stores. To order, you must call now. Hey, you're a diplomat, are you? No, I'm a Catholic Baptist. <laughs> Enjoy hundreds of Art's funniest and most shocking moments with the kids. How did your mother and daddy meet? Well, they met at a nudist camp. <laughs> You're going to laugh till you howl or return the tape for a full refund. Could you embarrass your mother and father? Could I? <laughs> Call and order this priceless collector's video right away. Order now and get this bonus video featuring Art and the Kids free. You get two hilarious videos for just $19.95, so use your credit card and call 1-800-879-7598. Or send check or money order to the address on your screen. Sorry, no CODs. Call toll-free 1-800-879-7598. I love to play games. Which would you rather do, swallow a goldfish or streak? I'd streak. Panel Tales, weekdays, 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Introducing the Instant Flower Garden. It comes to you rolled up like a carpet, a giant 12 feet long. Just roll it out and water it. All the seeds and nutrients are in there, ready to spring forth hundreds of the most beautiful flowers imaginable. Many different varieties, many dramatic colors that keep on blooming for months. Bouquet after beautiful bouquet of colorful, fragrant flowers. You can even plant on a slope and fit special areas. Why spend over a hundred dollars on all this stuff just to get a backache? The Instant Flower Garden is now only $29.95.
But call now and get these special flower shears that cut, strip, crush, and even saw absolutely free. The Instant Flower Garden comes with a money-back guarantee. So order yours now. Have your credit card ready and call 1-800-608-5577 to get the Instant Flower Garden and free gardening shears. That's 1-800-608-5577. Again, 1-800-608-5577. Now remember that each of these hardy gentlemen claims to be John Kunst, a round-the-world walker. And we'll start the question with Gene Rayburn, why not? Yes, I think it's a marvelous idea that they're going to do that and collect for UNICEF, too. And walking is great. Number two, uh, was that your brother who was out here with the mule? Yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, number three, how are you going to cross the Atlantic? That trick hasn't been done in 2,000 years, walking <laughs> on the water. <laughs> well, we're... As a matter of fact, we're not sure exactly. It'll either be an Air Force uh, jet to Lisbon, Portugal, or for sure we have a freighter lined up to. Isn't that fudging a little? Well, no, we don't, we don't intend to uh, cross water by walking, but uh, it'll gonna be... It's going to walk over all the land masses of the Earth? Right. I see. Number one, what kind of shoes will you be wearing? Uh, we use regular hiking boots. Yeah. We were given one pair. Of, you were um, given a pair? We were given just one pair, though, and they refused to give us a second. And what kind of... Would they have special soles on them? Uh, no, there, there are a rippled so. Oh. Number two, how many pounds will you carry on your back, or will a mule carry all the things? That's the job the mule has, carrying our pack. Yeah. Has he objected? Uh, once in a while, he would object a little bit. But... Number three, what... As a little sidelight, he objected strenuously on the stage here, and we got it cleaned up just in time for the show to go on. That's <laughs> 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 true. <laughs> Let's go to Kitty. Thank you. Uh, walking is indeed the best way to see the country, but who thought of this idea, number three? Well, it was a friend of ours actually had thought of the idea, and uh, Dave liked it a lot, and it's more Dave's idea than mine, actually. I just... Where did you start from? From Minnesota. I see. And number two, can you explain why this mule took such an exception to Mr. Moore? He actually doesn't like very many people very well. Oh, it's a lady mule. Very temperamental mule. Oh, Gary, I'm that explains sorry. It. Number one, do you, do you know what kind of shoes your brother's wearing now? Right now, what yes. type of shoes? No, I don't. Uh, he, he, uh, do you know number three? Yes. Is he wearing the walking shoes that you are going to walk in? He's wearing the pair that were given to us. And number two, why did, who gave you the shoes and why only one pair? That was mean, too. Yeah. Well, they gave us one pair because my brother wrote to him, and when we tried oh. to get it... Oh, you company. don't want to say. All right. And when we wrote to them for another pair, they wouldn't give it to us. I see. Number uh, one, how do you ask for contributions for UNICEF? We have small index cards with our purpose printed and on them. And you give them out. We give them and out. And number three, where do you see? I'm sorry, Kitty. Good questions. We're going to go on to Bill. I have a horrible thought. You mentioned about the donkey objecting on stage. Yes. You realize next week the Republicans might ask for equal time? <laughs> I mean, a thing like that can put a better show than this off the air. Uh, number three, that is a mule, that animal, uh, who was, which was out here? Yes, it's not a donkey, it's not, a mule. Not a donkey. Now, what, what makes a mule, number, number one, what is the difference between a mule and a donkey? Well, a mule can't reproduce. A mule is a cross between a Shetland pony and a donkey. Oh, I see. Uh, well, isn't like a, a, there are a lot of mules I saw, the army mules, Hannibal, he was much bigger, he was taller, number two. Uh, what, what made him so much taller than your mule? This is a pony mule, and that would be a cross between a horse and a donkey. You mean a mule and a mule can't have a mule offspring? No. That's, oh, oh I oh, think that's That's terrible. That's what makes him so mean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we go please to play chess. Thank you. Number one, how long have you known your mule? Oh, we just got it at the beginning of our trip. Oh, uh, number two, does your mule like you, or does it feel a certain... She likes to have us around, but she doesn't like us touching her. I see. Well, number three, is this mule going to have... This one little mule, will he make it? Uh, going to have to walk all around the world? He's such a little thing. Well, no. As a matter of fact, uh, Willie has to, to uh, leave us here in New York. We have to get another mule when we get to Portugal because of the uh, quarantine business, so... Uh, people from our hometown are coming in to get her. Okay. Uh, well, number one, uh, who pays for your eating and sleeping at night and all that stuff? Well, we brought money for ourselves, but most of the time people put us up for free That's and good. feed us for free. Okay. Well, uh, number two, um, three years is a long time out of your life. I mean, like school and all that stuff. How do you resolve that? We think it's going to be a great, and so far it has been a great adventure and a great experience, and we have a chance to meet a lot of people and also see the world. Yeah. 
Whichever one of the three it is, I cannot imagine a better education, a better way to spend three years in your life. However, we must now decide which one we think it is. How about you? Do you think it's number one? Or do you think it's number two? Or perhaps it's at number three. Fifty dollars is what it costs us for each wrong vote. Five hundred dollars of all the votes are wrong. And Gene Rayburn, my friend? Well, here's what I did, Gary. Yes. Here's my contribution to UNICEF. Good lad. And I voted for number one because he's the puniest and the least likely to do this feat. And if he's not the one, if he takes a dollar, I'll break his arm. <laughs> So there's one vote and a conditional contribution right. uh, from Gene oh, Rayburn. Right. Let's go to Kitty Carlisle. Well, I voted for number two because he seems like the ruggedest, and if he takes your dollar, he can have two from me. <laughs> there you go. We're going to have bloodshed amongst the panel. Stay tuned. Bill Cullen. This is snowballing here. <laughs> yes. I voted for number two also, but I don't have any money with me, so underneath the, my number, I have a little IOU I've written out there. <laughs> If it's number two. And a fine little bill, my friend. You go get your, your money somewhere. Uh, let, let's go to Peggy, please. Well, I, I think that they all, it could be any one of them. I don't want to seem like a big shot, but I'm giving five bucks for the real one. Oh. And I oh. think it's number one. Well, you think it's number one. one. All right. Oh, right. No matter what, you've made money, so the votes are all in. And will the real John Kuntz please stand up? <laughs> number three. Two. Thank you, John. We'll be back to you in a moment. Number one, you got two wrong votes, my friend. What is your real name, and, uh, and uh, what do you do? My name is Paul McGoldrick, and I'm a student at Fordham University. Uh -huh. <laughs> Number three, I'm afraid you weren't quite sunburned enough. I think that's what did you in. What is your real name, please, and what do you do? My name is Scott Chiro, and I'm a waiter at the Auto Club. Uh -huh. <laughs> John, have you had any trouble getting a, a passport to, to walk your way through Russia? As a matter of fact, uh, a fellow Minnesotan is going to help us get through uh, Russia, and that's Hubert Humphrey, former vice president. Uh -oh. He's going to make the arrangements for us. And how mm -hmm. come you're going in an Air Force plane to Portugal? Well, that's not for sure. We might be on a freighter. Hey, don't go in the winter to Russia with the don with the mule. It's too cold and everything. And they'll eat them over there because there's a food shortage. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, furthermore, Napoleon got into all kinds of trouble right. trying to do that. John and friends, thank you very much for being here with us on To Tell the Truth, and good luck to you. Oh, we have really an intensely interesting spot. The right of trial by jury is the basis of our legal system and probably the most democratic of all of our governmental structures. Now, trial by jury has a long and an honorable history. Our next guest has written a fascinating footnote to that chronicle, and we'll find all about uh, that right after these messages. It's amazing, but lots of homeowners didn't refinance their homes in 1993. At the Money Store, you can refinance with just one phone call. It's probably because people think they have to have perfect credit. The Money Store refinance. One loan, one payment. We look for a way to pay off all those high-rate bills. The mortgage, the cards, all of them. So you end up with one loan, one payment. Even if your credit is less than perfect, call the money store at 1-800-LOAN-YES. That's 1-800-LOAN-YES. Hey kids, put on your hard hats and get ready for Real Life Giant Construction Equipment for Kids. The fun-filled video with 25 monster machines for only $4.95. Join Hard Hat Harry on a magical adventure to actual construction sites. 60 thrill pack minutes of bruising bulldozers, colossal cranes, dirty dump trucks, and more. 25 big machines to watch over and over again. Asphalt eaters, pavers, rock crushers, all the heavy equipment kids love driving right into your living room. Real life giant construction equipment for kids is a rare chance to see huge excavators in action. Stone mountains blown up by dynamite. Kids even climb into the driver's seat of the big machines they love. Real life giant construction equipment for kids, originally sold for $19.95, is now only $4.95. And when you call, we'll also tell you about our free bonus video offer. So call now to order. There's no white like Plus White. With its dual-action anti-stain polishers, Plus White whitens like no ordinary toothpaste can. 
There's no white like plus white. Want to go curly? Get Wash & Curl, the shampoo with curl enhancers that work right in the shower. Thousands and thousands of women have gone curly with Wash & Curl, the curling shampoo. Now, do away with razors, cuts, and stubble. The Hair Off Mitten with its special silk coat surface that massages away hair fast and easy. The Hair Off Mitten, amazing. And now, let's meet our book writing juror. Number one. What is your name, please? My name is Jerry Chester. I'm executive vice president of Goodson Todman Productions. Number two. My name is Ann Nixon. I write affidavits and teach the imposters how to lie on Goodson Todman to tell the truth. Number three. My name is Iris Scutch, and I'm the director of another Goodson Todman program, Beat the Clock. Now, panel, you know all three of these people. You know them well, each in his own or her own job. You know that each of these people is quite capable of writing a book. Each of them has it in him or in her. But I don't think that any of you know which one has actually written the book. That's what we're going to try to find out. Here is Jerry Chester's or Ann Nixon's or Ira Scutch's story, and it goes as follows. I, Jerry Chester, or Ann Nixon, or Ira Scutch, work for Goodson Todman, the producers of To Tell the Truth. Some time ago, I answered a summons for jury duty. To my surprise, I found myself serving as one of the 12 jurors on a murder trial. Two young men were accused of robbing and shooting an elderly dentist. My fellow jurors and I all represented widely different social, economic, and racial backgrounds. But when it came down to deciding guilt or innocence, each of us acted as an individual human being, not as a member of any special group. I felt that the inner workings of a murder trial jury was a subject that would shed light on the American system of law and justice. So without telling my friends at Goodson Todman about this project, I wrote a book about my experience. I call it The Ninth Juror, signed Jerry Chester, or Ann Nixon, or Ira Scott. <laughs> Peggy, we're going to start with you. Uh, you say you don't know anything about it. No, um, my dear. To the wildest of coincidences, I happen to know. So I'll have to disqualify myself. Oh, you do know? There's nothing. It's like a mini to one shot that I'd know this, but I do. Well, we'll check back with you a little later and find out. So we get a big zero from Peggy, which counts as a disqualification and counts as $50 down. And we'll go to Gene Rayburn. Thank you, Gary. Ira, are you wearing makeup? <laughs> Ira, tell me the truth. I, are you wearing makeup? Well, I've got a little something to cover my beard. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, all right, let's get down to business here. Now, Mr. Chester, if you're the real one, you're, you've sworn to tell the truth. You know the rules of the game, right? Right. Tell me, how much money they pay in this company? <laughs> No, no, come on, let's stop fooling around, folks. Let's get right to it now. <laughs> Ann Nixon, what is one thing the judge tells the jury before he sends him into the jury room when he's... He gives you certain instructions. Well, he instructs you that your decision is to be based upon what you have heard in the courtroom alone. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Ira, who makes the determination on law? The, the jury or the judge? No, the judge. The judge, all the jury does is to determine the facts. Okay. Now, uh, Jerry, how many weeks did this trial take? It took almost three months. Thank you. That takes us seriously. Good heavens. Uh, juror number two, Ann. <laughs> um, what was the uh, emo uh, background in terms of economic and uh, individual status of the, quickly, of the jurors? in broad strokes? Well, they range from professional men, business executives, uh, city employees, there was a sanitation man, uh, there was a toy salesman, there was a woman who was a retired uh, school executive. Thank you, that gives me a rough idea. Now, uh, Ira, number three, in the affidavit, one thing I didn't understand was that it said that in spite of their economic and racial backgrounds, you acted as individual human beings. Does this mean that you endorse the jury system? You believe that once a juror is in the jury box, he is really a qualified uh, judge, really, no matter what his background is? 
Well, uh, that was the experience that I had. Uh, it was really the most interesting thing about this trial was that these people came in and every one of them took their responsibilities completely seriously and they deliberated and tried their utmost to be fair and out of this came what I thought was a very fair verdict. That's wonderful to hear. Okay, thank you, and that takes us to Bill Cullen. I have little or no hope on this, Gary, because Ann briefs the contestants on this show and uh, <laughs> Ira's a producer, director, and Jerry's an executive vice president they're all great liars. <laughs> by the very... By Wouldn't the, trust any one of them. By the very nature of the way they earn their living. How long did your trial last, Ira? Uh, my trial was three weeks. Uh, did they let you off? For good Never know. Yes, they let me off for good behavior. And we have a three-month trial and a three-week uh, trial. How long did yours last? Two months and one week. How long, Jerry? Jerry, how long did you work on the book? About a year and a half. Did you begin, uh, Ira, did you begin working on the book while the trial was still in progress? Uh, no, not really. I, I only decided to do the book uh, later. I wonder if that's, num uh, Ann, number two, uh, if you had started the book while the trial was still in progress, would there be anything illegal about that, anything n that, that the court might not like? Well, I hope not, because I did start the book while the trial was in progress. Oh, dear, we can, hey, Jerry, how, uh, number one. I'm sorry, oh, time you know? is uh, up. Huh? I want to know how it came out. Yeah. Well, we're going to find out about that, I guess, amongst other things. You buy the book. Oh, <laughs> That's I, how you find out, I you dumb-dumb. Dumb. Right now, you got to vote. Certainly. And who is it? Do you think it's Jerry, number one? Is it Ann, number two? Is it Ira, number three? Oh. It's going to cost us $50 if he gets wrong. It's going to cost us $500 out of Jerry's pocket. <laughs> oh, if everybody's wrong, oh, I hope everybody's wrong. I want to watch him blanch. If it turns out to be him, indeed. And let's find out who's going to start the, I believe, uh, Peggy, you start the vote. Of course, you got a disqualification. That's okay. right. And let's go to Jean. Well, I must say, they, they know how to lie. Oh, yeah? Because yeah. I am totally baffled. And as close as I've been to Ira and working with him, hmm? you know, I don't know, so I, I just took a shot in the dark that it was uh, Ann Nixon who did it. She could have done it. Right, girl, and let's go to Kitty. Well, I have a feeling that all three of these people are really patriotic, concerned Americans, and it's the kind of thing they would write. But I think Ira's, if you'll forgive me, a little more that kind of an American. So I voted for number three. <laughs> so it is. One for two and one for three, and Bill Cullen is sitting there shaking his That's head. That's only because Ira is taller than the rest of them. That's the only... <laughs> No, I know all these people, two of them very well, the two gentlemen. If I ever knew anyone who could and would write a book, it's Jerry Chester. So for that reason, I voted for Jerry. Very well. Here is the reveal. Here is the book. It is called The Ninth Juror. It has a very handsome jacket. It is The Ninth Juror. It is written by Jerry ah! Chester. <laughs> Jerry Chester, stand up. Thank you, Jerry, very much. Let's get to Anne. Anne, uh, you've never written a book, have you? Have you ever, have, or been on a jury, have you? Never on a jury, never a book. Nifty job, really. Yeah. Uh, Ira, how about never you? Book, no, I've never been on a jury, and I barely read a book. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy, why did, how did you know about Jerry having written I a book? I was walking I down that. Park Avenue, and somebody said, Hi, are you still on the television? And I said, Yes. And they said, You work for Goods and Tobby? You know, the guy works for Goods and Tobby, and Jerry Chester just wrote a book. Oh, <laughs> out of, out of the happened, blue. It happened about an hour ago. I mean, it's like freaky. How about that? Well, thank you for disqualifying yourself. Jerry, congratulations. Thank you, Gary. Uh, why do you call it? The one question didn't come out. Why is it called the ninth juror? I was the ninth juror. Ah, <laughs> indeed. Did you come out? This question was not asked to you. Did it, it, do you come out? Did you come out with a feeling that was an optimistic experience? Do you think that the jury system is indeed a proper one? I found it a very impressive experience. It revealed a great deal about uh, our trial system and about human beings. Mm -hmm. Most of the people behaved in ways that really were not expected of them, contrary to stereotype. And I thought they took on their job very seriously. Uh, it went on for a long time, the deliberation. We were put up in a hotel overnight. One thing we never did find out about, uh, Jerry, was what was the verdict. I don't think I should say at this point, because that's part of the suspense of the book. Ah! This shows why he's executive vice president yeah. in Goodson Southman, right? I think you're entirely right. 
And I certainly want to recommend in this book, The Ninth Juror by, I can't read his name. <laughs> Anyhow, Jerry, good luck to you. And thank you very much, Ira. Thank you so much for being with us here on To Tell the Truth. The stars come out every Sunday night on All Star Family Feud. This week, it's good versus evil. As the roughest, toughest WWF wrestlers try to settle their differences on the family feud. What would you do? You had a party and one of your guests got very drunk. Three seconds. Tie him up. <laughs> you decide who's good and who's evil. Don't miss a full hour of the All-Star Family Feud. Sunday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on Game Show Network. Never iron clothes again or waste money pressing them at the dry cleaner. Just get wrinkles out and spray those wrinkles away. It's that easy. Why go through this torture? We'll take this cotton shirt and watch. We'll spray one side with wrinkles out and right before your eyes, the wrinkles vanish. Amazing. Wrinkles Out gets the wrinkles out of cottons, woolens, silks, blended fabrics, even the clothes you're wearing. And just look how easy it is to restore a pleat. Wrinkles Out is only $14.95. But wait, say goodbye to that ironing drudgery now and we'll double your order. Plus, give you this travel size Wrinkles Out free. You get everything for only $14.95. So order now. Sorry, no COD. So to order Wrinkles Out, call toll free 1 800 733 6400 or send check or money order for $14.95 plus shipping to the address on your screen. But for faster service, call 1 800 733 6400. Are you a sports fan? Do you know one? Because now you can get five different awesome sports videos for just $19.95. That's right, all five videos for only $19.95. And this is first rate stuff. You'll see today's hottest stars like Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley. Plus, get classic footage like Willie Mays and Wilt Chamberlain's 100 point game. And this video here is wall to wall incredible plays. It's got some of the most awesome action you've ever seen. You'll laugh and you'll cringe when you watch the greatest sports bloopers ever committed. Also, see some of the most hilarious pranks and practical jokes in sports. These five different videos include hours of exclusive footage, much of it never before seen on TV. You can't go wrong because you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. So call now and get these five great sports videos for only $19.95. Call now, 1-800-472-7777. That's 1-800-472-7777. You get all five videos for only $19.95. Call now, 1-800-472-7777. Do you want to make more money? Then call this toll-free number to find out how easy it is to train at home for a better career. At ICS, more than 10 million men and women have prepared for new careers without ever setting foot inside a classroom. And now at home, in your spare time, you can get your diploma or degree. Choose from any one of these courses. Then call toll-free for free information about training with ICS. Call 1-800-719-5400 right now for free information. There's no obligation. Call 1-800-719-5400. You're watching Game Show Network, where What's My Line is next with Larry Blyden, followed by the newlywed game and the dating game. You know, it was very shrewd and very right of Jerry Chester not to tell you how the book comes out. Furthermore, I have many friends who write for a living, and they tell me that one of the biggest problems when they write a book is that their friends automatically expect a free copy. Mm. They don't realize that the publisher does not give the author 400 copies for free and say, give them to your friends. The author has to buy his own book. Indeed, he gets it at a discount, but after all, you know, you, you get the feeling that he has in there like a big bag of peanuts. He can hand them out. So if any of your friends write a book, buy it. Don't expect a present. See you tomorrow. Take care now. Where's our free book? In addition to the cash awards, our central characters today will receive suddenly a carousel wig. Can be worn smooth, tousled, clipped, or with special occasion curls. Another easy care monocrylic wig from Carousel. Transportation, another consideration provided by Chevrolet, featuring the 1971 Chevelle, America's most popular mid-sized car, new bumpers and grills, same solid, dependable performance at a very Chevrolet price. This is Johnny Olsen speaking for To Tell the Truth. A Mark Goodson, Bill Thompson production.
your 